Hello, this is Pat Hood from Passions and Pastimes and today I'd like to do a little bit of an experiment and take you on a journey as I uh, figure out a way to lengthen this uh, vintage necklace so that it's no longer 14 inches, uh, uh, more than a choker for me, uh, and is uh, 20 inches long. Um, now, first of all, I've already restored the centerpiece here um, by replacing missing rhinestones. There probably were red rhinestones in the top there. Um, I used those stones, uh, which were already loose, to fix the bottom part of the uh, centerpiece and then just put clear stones in the top. Um, new rhinestones here and new rhinestones in the center. So this bottom part is is beautifully intact now. Um, nice shine on the back. You can see it's riveted construction. There's no maker's mark on this, but it is a piece that I wouldn't uh, like to wear. Um, but the 14 inch length is just too small for me. So what I've done is I've already divided it into its component parts. So here's the centerpiece, which we'll retain as it is. And then there are the two side pieces of the necklace. Each of these is five and a half inches long. And the clasp, the fold over clasp, I'm not going to count that um, as being a piece of the length. But you can see when I put them side by side, they're pretty much the same length. Now, um, I figure I would need to add three inches on each side um, at minimum. So if that would make take that from 14 to uh, plus 6 would be 20 inches. Um, and but I don't want to uh, add items the whole length because let's see one, two, three, four, five. After about this spot here, this part of the chain will be be, be hidden um, behind the neck. And while um, it's sometimes nice to see extra color and crystals back there, um, I don't want to put them there. How's that? I'd like to keep them at the front of the necklace. So, um, I have five spaces. This is going to connect to the centerpiece. This is going to connect to the centerpiece. So between here and here, one, two, three, four, five. In those five spaces, I need to add um, three inches on each side. So that's about uh, a third of an inch. Or if I wanted to add a total of 10 inches, um, I'd have to add four five inch per space, uh, half an inch per space. So I'm going to do some experimenting um, with uh, components that I have on hand that would go with this color scheme. Sort of, so the, the gold tone head pins or eye pins um, and red and clear crystals. I have Swarovski crystals and Precocia crystals. Um, maybe some little gold tone spacers. And so let's get started on doing a little bit of uh, experimenting. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take apart some links. And it's best if you do this um, with two sets of pliers. Hello, and I'm back with the beadboard. There, let's focus. So the way the beadboard is designed is that you place your center component here at position zero, and then it's marked in inches for the various lengths. So if I want to take this to 20 inches total, that would I would go up to 10 inches on each side. Um, I've centered my center component. My first link is going to join up there, and then I figured um, about a third to a half of an inch of um, embellishment between each of those links in order to make um, 
my necklace long enough. So let me pull out some crystals and see what we can do. So I have, um, first of all, I have these round Swarovski, um, probably 10 millimeter, they're a little kind of shiny, uh, that we can use. I've, those are bicone, what are called bicones because they're pointy on the top and the bottom. This is, these aren't quite the same color of white. These are from Vincenza. Those are four millimeter. Um, those are even smaller. These are so, those are the same size as Swarovski's. What else have we got? We've got some four millimeter in a red that's not quite as dark as that center red, but because it'll be a distance away, they might work. That's another crystal company. Um, these are Swarovski reds. Um, again, they're more of a cyan rather than a cardinal red, but um, might work. I got some Swarovski three millimeters. These are even smaller. Um, uh, red and they look kind of yellowy. They don't look quite white, so that might not, but the reds in there are a possibility. Um, and what else do I have? Hmm. Oh, I have some teeny tiny, very dark red ones. Those are a little closer. These look like uh, three millimeters, maybe four. I'd have to measure them. So there's another group that we could use. And these are some six millimeter. Um, these are Cristazzi. These aren't quite the same quality as the uh, Swarovski. And you can see there's not anywhere near the same amount of shine. So I'm not going to mix those two. So I just put out some here on the board. Those are the clears. Here's our different reds. I like those really dark ones. There's that one. Um... And then there's the smaller red. So it looks like I might have to invest in some uh, other smaller crystals, but we'll see. We can, uh, uh, and where's the Cristazzi Liz lid so that I don't, there we are. I don't want to get the, I have my lids all labeled so I know what I'm dealing with here. Okay. Um, the only other thing I have on hand that's kind of in the gold tone color are these little spacers, and they could certainly be shined up to use. So, welcome back. It's Pat Hood from Passions and Pastimes, and my camera uh, battery ran out, so I had to take a break. Um, so, welcome back. I'm going to move in a little closer. So when we left, I was just pointing out the colors and sizes of um, Swarovski and other types of crystals that I have to use. And uh, one of the things I did was I took the antique gold spacers and I shined them up. You may not be able to tell um, much uh, difference on the screen, but they are closer to the gold, the gold color. Um, of the original necklace. Now the thing to do is to figure out the number and design of the spacers to use with the necklace. I've determined that if I want to go to 20 inches I have all these spaces to fill and I was planning not to put uh, a spacer here, but I might change my mind. It is possible it could go in there. Um, and these are the way I'll be constructing the spacers is I'll be using what's called an eye pin, stringing on the crystals and spacers, whatever I use, um, 
and then creating another eye on the opposite end so that it can be connected with the links. So these are again are my colors, the um, 8 or 10 millimeter um, Swarovski, the 4 millimeter Venetia, 4 millimeter um, Heavenly Crystals, um, 8 or 10s, I should merely measure those of the uh, in the red, the three millimeters in the, uh, it's called light Siam or Siam, and then these um, dark red, which I slightly favor. Um, whoops, I guess it's not in the screen. There we go. Which I slightly favor um, compared to the others. Um, so what I've gone and done, just to make our lives easier, is I've designed some spacers. So I'm going to move um, all of these supplies over to the side, slightly out of view, and line this up a little more centered. So, obvious combinations, uh, large, white, red, white. Um, when you put this down in relation to the others, it doesn't look bad. It's a fairly large spacer, if you can see over there. Um, too plain, too, uh, not enough variety in terms of the size. I mean, there's a lots of a variety in size of this um, focal in terms of the size of crystals and just the size of the, the metal. And I think that needs to be repeated in the spacers. I'll put this back. Um, so I have rejected this one, but I'll put it up here so you can kind of see the progression. Um, to add a little variety, um, zoom in on this one, there, focus, um, I've just added some of the spacer beads to this and it looks better than the first one, uh, but again, I think if we compare it with the actual necklace, um, let's just zoom in down there just focus in. Um, doesn't look too bad, um, but I'm not sure about that one. It's a possibility, so I'm going to leave it sitting up here. Uh, there we go. Um, and then from there, there's the opposite configuration. So instead of white, red, right, white, red, white, there's um, red, white, red, and I'm going to put it off to the side here, um, because again, um, same issues, I, I actually like the coloring, I think, though I don't know if that'll be too much red in the necklace. Um, it's much more obvious though that that red is not as dark as the focal, so that might be an issue. And then here is um, the opposite configuration um, with the spacer beads added, and again if we put it down with the necklace, um, with the spacers, it's not quite as obvious that the reds are different. Um, so that is a possibility. I'm going to put it, I'm going to move this one. Whoops, if I can get it out of there. There we go. So there's a couple of possibilities. Um, from there, I worked down in sizes. Um, I kind of liked less red. There's just the plain uh, white, red, um, white with the two four millimeter crystals on either side of the larger crystal. And it's, if we focus it on the board, it's not bad. It's about the right size, about that half inch that's needed. Um, but I think it 
needs something else. Again, for me, uh, for somebody that might be simple enough and that would be all that they would use. Um, so here is an example of the same thing, but with the spacers added. There we go. And I quite like this. I'm going to put it down on the board. And I just work these out by taking, you know, all the combinations and looking how that's looking, the balance of gold to, to white to red. But we'll uh, see what our other choices are. I'm going to put this up here. I'm going to move this one down. And then there is um, the opposite configuration of that. Get it to focus for you. There we go. So here we've got red on the outside, the gold, and then the white. And I think this makes the white or the clear um, sparkle a little better. It, with the gold. I'm not sure if that's true or not. Maybe just me, my, the way I see it. And actually I kind of like that. Okay, so there's one more size combination. There we go. Focus in on that. So this is the smallest combination. These are three millimeter uh, reds with um, the gold spacers and a four millimeter um, center clear. And that's very delicate looking. There we are. Um, I think the smaller size, and it may be just the way I've positioned the camera, but the smaller size, um, the color difference is not as strong. Um, but it will depend. I'd have to do a, a bunch of them. And it might not be until I do the actual stringing that I can tell for sure. Um, so those are my four um, combinations. Now, you can do as many combinations as you want, depending on um, what beads you have on hand. I, I have no reason to go out and buy new crystals, considering the wealth I have here. Um, so I'm working with what I have. That just leaves me really with combinations involving the dark red and the dark red um, you don't see the sparkle when they're on the tray but they do have as much sparkle as the light red here is the um, the dark red with the clear the largest clear and when I put that down in place again it's very delicate we're focusing on that it looks the right color and actually that if that's all I had I could go ahead and make um, spacers like that and I think um, there would be enough gold color in the uh, jump rings and the eyes of the pins that are used to connect it that um, it would look just fine and then the same thing with um, a smaller center crystal. Again, even more delicate. Um, you don't see the, the difference in the sizes uh, as much here, and I'm not sure um, I think it would be fine in the necklace if we focus down on it there. Yeah, I think it would be fine. I think it's a little small for the half inch that I need in each space. A couple other simple combinations. Okay, so I'm not sure how well this would work. Again, it's put them together. It's even simpler. Uh, the deep red, gold in the center. Again, very tiny. If I focus down here. Um, and I don't think it has enough clear enough white. Uh, I think it would make the necklace too dark. 
it would be a necklace that seems predominantly red. Um, so I'm going to reject that one. It's also very small. I'm going to put it off to the side. And then this was a similar idea. Um, more gold and red. And again, it's a bit longer. It's almost the right length. But too much gold now, I think, and not enough red and not enough clear contrast. These are all my personal opinions. So you may have one that you think, no, no, I think that's the right one. So just three more things then. So here we have red on the outside, gold next to the large clear center stone. And it was a combination I liked from the other side when we were using the lighter reds. Um, and when we put it down, it takes up a little more space, which is fine. And when we focus in, when you kind of look at the combination of, uh, you know, the amount of red here, the amount of red and clear there, um, I think that's on the right track. Um, like that one. Here's, again, another variation. And now the gold is on the outside and the red is in the center. And the reason I prefer the gold next to the crystals is it has a cushioning effect, the metal against the glass instead of glass against glass or crystal against crystal. Um, and it spreads the gold color out a little bit more. So, but I'll put it down here and see what you think. If you look at that one down there, again, it's now it's kind of a, you know, small variations in color. And I think there's just sort of too much gold altogether and the colors in the center. That's why I, I don't like that one quite as much. And then there's just one last combination. This last combination, and, and it, it could be uh, done differently. It, it's basically just got a smaller center stone. So the gold could be on either side of the clear stone. Um, and maybe I'll try that. I'll just quickly do that. Put it the other way around. So that's the smaller version. Let's see if I can focus in on that one. So there's another, the last combination. I'm going to put it down. Again, it's, um, if we look at it, it's just that much more delicate. So what do we want to do? I happen to think at this point, looking at these, that definitely the dark red ones, um, you know, versus the light red ones are going to be the way to go so that we don't call um, too much attention to the differences in the reds. So I'm going to remove these bunch from the running. There we go. Um, I like this one, but I think it's just too small for what I need. And I don't want to be adding... Well, I'd have to think. Let's see. It's as long as the actual link. So let's just think about this. So there's the link. There's the um, what I'm adding. I'm going to have to add a lot more if I want to get the length I need. Um, And I would, at this point, I think I would like to go with a little more length. So I'm going to take this one out of the running. I'm going to do the same for this. Um, not enough clear. And this. I like the size of this one. It gives me um, a little more, a little more length, the half inch that I need. I do like the next size up from that. I'm gonna move this one without with the gold on the outside. I don't, I don't like as much as this one with the gold 
next to the crystal. It's again that much longer. So I need to worry, I think, in that case, is it going to make the necklace look too heavy? As if these gold links aren't important enough. And I really think what I'm trying to do is balance out these um, and get the length, but not but not detract from them because they were an essential part of the original necklace. Maybe I'm overthinking it. And if you think so, let me know. Um, but I'm going to put that one off to the side. This one, it's just about the right length. It doesn't add too much more gold. Um, nothing wrong with it except to kind of like the extra gold. I may not think that way once I've got um, a jump ring connecting these because I want the flexibility. I don't want to put this directly onto there. Um, so I think I'm really thinking this one. There we go. Or I'm going to take that long one out of there. Uh, or this one. Um, and I have, I, I like the sparkle of the Swarovski. So now the only thing to do, since I've narrowed it down to two, is, a, is for me to actually turn these into links where I have a loop on the other end. And I'm going to do that and come back. Whoops. <laughs> Fumble fingers here, um, and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, I'm back, and I have made two uh, links of each type. I'm going to focus in on them. So there's with the uh, uh, large center Swarovski crystal and the two smaller crystals beside it in the dark red. And then here is a pair of oops I lost a crystal okay these aren't identical all right well <laughs> that's problems um, here's with the smaller center as well as the gold and the dark red I see on the other side here I've missed a red somehow so that one but that'll be fine for what we're doing in terms of designing I'll just have to fix it when I make the right one let's do our first little example so we're gonna have a jump ring in there then we're going to have a link, jump ring, and another thing, and then another link. So let's focus in down on there. So how does that look? Um, consider thinking that we would then have one, two, three more of those, and then gold chain. Um, I think that would look quite nice. And the only other way to do this would be to put a gold link here, then the chain, another gold link, then this, another gold link. Um, but I think that leaves too much gold right here with, hmm, have to look at how it hung. It might be okay. Just on the flat board, I think I like the other way around. So what do you think? Okay, so there's two options. Or, yeah, two options. Then we'll ignore the fact that one of these is wrong. All right, we'll put that there. The next one would go here. Yeah, there's that one. And I can hardly tell the difference. But I think I like the simpler one. I was thinking that the large Swarovski balanced the large, other large rhinestones. Especially here. 
So I'm a little undecided. It may have to be one of those situations where I actually link some things together, do one side one way and the other side a diff the other way that I think will work, and then compare them. So I have some thinking to do. Um, it'll take me a little bit to assemble this. Um, so I'm going to leave the video there. If you have any comments of what you think might work best, um, then I'd love uh, to hear from you. And I'll come back with my final design and um, try to, uh, again, give you uh, a video of how I made my final decisions. Thanks very much. I hope you've enjoyed uh, working through this design process with me. It's Pat Hood from Passions and Pastimes, and I hope you have a great rest of the day. Thank you.